Under pressure, it's a liquid. Release the pressure and it becomes a gas. It's called LPG, or liquefied petroleum gas. And in the Netherlands, for more than 30 years, it has been used as a fuel for engines, an alternative to petrol and to diesel. Not only is it potentially cheaper than conventional fuels, it's also a great deal cleaner, and in comparison with diesels, very much quieter. Since the energy crisis began, the use of LPG has risen a great deal throughout the world, and in the near future, the supply will increase a great deal more. However, despite its obvious advantages, there are still many people who have a fundamental fear of using LPG. A lack of knowledge and several accidents in the past have prevented LPG from becoming as popular as it deserves to be. Here in the Netherlands, the TNO Research Institute for Road Vehicles has been researching into the use of LPG as an engine fuel for many years. However, with a new facility to conduct full-scale car crashes under controlled conditions, TNO is at last in a position to carry out vital research into the safety of LPG, in addition to investigations on fuel efficiency and exhaust emissions. Both in a crash situation and in a full-scale fire, these are the first tests in the world ever to be carried out on LPG and vehicles. What you are about to see is one out of a series of tests made with several makes of cars. A Renault 12 converted to LPG in a head-on collision at 60 kilometers an hour. As a result, the tank straps were elongated, but there were no leaks. A valve was broken, and that could have led to a minor leak, though in this case it didn't. The white plume is in fact water coming out of the petrol tank, because somebody forgot to put on the cap. Another familiar situation is the rear end collision. In this case, it's been simulated by a moving barrier hitting the car at 50 kilometers an hour, with a weight of 1,450 kilos behind it. The plastic cover on the filler valve was the only thing that suffered. The valve itself was still intact, and so was the whole of the rest of the LPG system. In some cases, LPG tanks can only be fitted in less well-protected places, and these vehicles were also put under test. Here is an Opel record, travelling at 70 kilometres an hour, hitting the LPG tanks underneath a city bus. As you can see, the tanks are completely unprotected. Apart from a superficial dent in the tank and a slightly twisted tank mounting, the LPG installation was totally undamaged. These pictures were shot at a thousand frames a second. So in effect, what you are looking at has been slowed down 40 times. Now, a private car traveling at 40 kilometers an hour, hitting a solidly mounted tank. As you can see, most of the energy is absorbed by the car. Admittedly, the tank is distorted, but there is no leak. Within the context of this research, it was impossible to investigate every possible type of collision involving LPG installations. However, what emerged clearly from the tests was that LPG tanks can stand up to very high forces and can be deformed to a very high degree without leaking. As a final example of this, here is a wedge-shaped moving barrier carrying a mass weight of 1,450 kilos running into a fixed mounted tank at a speed of 32 kilometers per hour. Even now, the tank does not leak. The filler valve is leaking because it crashed into the rim of a steel plate. And so, what is the conclusion? 
Well, the fact is that provided that the system is installed by qualified personnel according to the regulations, LPG is no less safe than existing petrol systems. And indeed these findings are confirmed by practical experience going back some 30 years and relating to hundreds of thousands of actual vehicles on the road. In fire, very little is known about how vehicles behave and even less when the vehicle is converted to LPG. So, in cooperation with the Dutch transport authorities, TNO decided to carry out some preliminary tests. These involved two buses, one standard diesel bus and the other converted to a three-tank LPG storage system. 200 litres of diesel fuel in one and 300 litres of LPG in the other, therefore providing the same autonomy. For maximum safety, the tanks were covered in a heat and fire insulating coating. With the aid of some petrol, a fire was simulated on one of the rear tyres. Temperatures and pressures were registrated for all three of the LPG tanks and temperatures were taken both in and under the buses. The first few minutes produced almost identical fires in both vehicles. After four minutes, the temperatures inside the buses rose to 100 degrees and the vehicles were filled with a dense black smoke. After that, the fire in the diesel bus spread faster, caused by spilled diesel oil mixed with dirt under the bus. Sometime later, and burning diesel oil is flowing through a hole in the fuel tank where the aluminium gauge has melted away. The height of the fire was reached after about 11 minutes with temperatures inside the buses of about a thousand degrees. At this point, it's worth taking a close look at what is going on inside the LPG tanks. Obviously, the tank is absorbing a great deal of heat, but so is the liquid gas inside. As the temperature rises, so the volume increases and the pressure begins to rise. Eventually, the safety valve opens, LPG is blown off and ignited by the fire. The pressure has been released. But the balance between liquid and gas has changed. Liquid LPG is evaporating and the level drops. And so the process continues. But that isn't the whole story. The heat conduction through the metal tank into the liquid is very good. But the conduction into gas isn't nearly as good. Therefore, the top of the tank wall is becoming much hotter than the bottom. Because the level of the liquid is dropping, an increasing proportion of the tank is becoming hotter than the rest. It may happen that the tank is so weakened that it can rupture and burst open. The LPG will then evaporate very quickly and burn off. In the case of the tanks in the bus, the heat hasn't risen high enough yet for the safety valves to blow off. After about 16 minutes, both buses are more or less burnt out. But after 20 minutes, it seems that the fire in the rear end of the LPG bus is getting stronger. It transpired later on that what actually happened was that the aluminium delivery manifold for LPG fuel had partly melted away and LPG had been flowing out of the fuel lines into the fire. So, with the centre of the fire now near to the LPG tanks, the temperature and pressure is rising inside the tanks. After 30 minutes, the pressure in one tank is rising to the point where the relief valve opens and blows off. The tanks at the same time are losing a lot of their pressure through the leaking fuel lines. In the tank closest to the fire, the pressure is reduced as the valve blows off, but quickly rises and blows off again. For the next 45 minutes, the sequence is repeated more than 200 times. Even though the temperature has risen in the other two tanks, the leaking fuel lines have stopped the pressure from rising enough to blow off through the relief valves.
After 75 minutes, the heat is stopped. Not as simple as it looks, because it can happen that the escaping gas creates an uncontrollable gas-air mixture and therefore produces a dangerous situation when it comes to extinguishing the fire. When the test was over, it soon became clear that the flexible filler hoses had melted out of the central filling block and that half the fuel delivery manifold had melted away. Both parts were made out of aluminium. From this first fire test, one fact was proved. Even in a serious fire, LPG doesn't necessarily result in explosions or blefes. The three heat and fire insulated tanks did not show any sign of rupturing or exploding. Indeed, one of the tanks still contained seven litres of liquid LPG. As far as the test program was concerned, although not every possible accident was investigated, the results showed clearly that LPG tanks can withstand very high forces and deformations without leaking. Indeed, it would be reasonable to believe that in the case of collisions, LPG is as safe or even safer than existing petrol systems. In the near future, LPG as a feasible and clean fuel will be available in such quantities that it will obviously take its own considerable share of the automotive fuel market. For that reason alone, the research now being done by TNO will have to continue. There is no other way of proving that LPG is as safe as it is possible to make it.